Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Oklahoma Bison sale up in Perkins, Oklahoma. It went really good. We loved the facility and there was there was a lot of good animals there and it was probably one of the biggest crowds that we've had. That sale is actually one of the only public sales that's going around this year. It's one of the only public sales, live sales that you can actually attend. A lot of the sales this year and coming in 2021 will all be online. So a lot of people take advantage of that. It's you actually show up at the sale, look at the animals and purchase them. Um, because anytime that you buy animals online, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but with everything going on in our country, in the world, it's uh, a lot of people are doing the online bison sales. There for a minute, we had 16 bison. That was the biggest herd I've ever had, but now we're just down to 14, uh, which is which is good and growing because we got three of these that joined the herd here about a month ago. So I wanted to share something with you guys. My mom and Kevin, my stepdad, they were actually putting out hay for me. I'd been busy at the cabins and actually traveled to another bison ranch to work bison, and I was busy with the sale. Um, so been a little busy so my mom and Kevin came out and they they fed the bison some hay well they brought um, a round bell into Joe and his two ladies to kit and flow man I wish I could have been here because anytime you put a bell of hay out uh, a round bell of hay out you never know what you're gonna get and unfortunately I missed it now they got to see the show now I thought Dunbar my other bull, my three-year-old bull, could really destroy a hay bale. I was wrong. I was really wrong. I've never seen a bison destroy a hay bale like Big Joe did. Uh, the word big really came into play with this guy because he pushed the round bale. Now, these things can weigh about a thousand pounds, and uh, Joe pushed it around like it, was, like it was a little ball, and he pushed it. First of all, he hit it while it was on the tractor, and then he actually rolls it out after it's torn into a, a, about a third of its size, rolls it around, and then eventually knocks it into the water trough. Actually, even at some point has put a hole in the trough because he's been, hey, Flo, because he's been uh, a little, uh, a little antsy probably ready to get out hey big guy ready to get out of their holding pen they've been in here for about uh two or three weeks now um we're gonna we're still doing some fence projects and we're we're gonna let them out eventually where you can actually get some grass but we're giving them plenty of hay and we're supplement feeding them right now because we don't want to get dunbar and big joe really close together That's why it's important when you are putting hay out, make sure you always have the camera, especially with these bulls, because it is, you never know what you're gonna get. It's just a giant toy to them. Um, and then obviously some feed too, but which is the main thing. But I want you to take a look here in this lot. There's hay all the way around here. And they already had a bale of hay. We've already given them, I think one and they started to eat it down but this is the remnants left over from uh joe's uh debacle of destroying a bella hay and i know a lot of you are saying well golly that's a lot of hay wasted you're right it is a lot of hay wasted we want them to be happy and play and be able to do that that's really good for them to be able uh, to play with that round bell of hay and show some of that aggression, you know, I'm sure he, he likes um, Showing that aggression with Dunbar just I don't know probably 70 yards away from him So, you know, he's got to be a big dog which he is he is the big dog on campus now is what I like to say 
But yes, a lot of this hay unfortunately is wasted. Uh, it's good for them to lay down on it, especially on a day like this where it's kind of crummy and cold and wet. They'll use it for, um, you know, a thermal bed or whatever you want to call it. We may have to get some hay rings um, and go from there and see if that works. That way, when we put it in here, he won't uh, maybe destroy it as bad so that it can eat most of that round bale and not turn it into a toy or to um, a bed like this situation here. Uh, I wish I could have been here to catch it, but mom and Kevin caught it, and so that was pretty fun for them, and my mom filmed it, so thanks to them. Take a look at this clip right here. It's pretty funny. You gotta get in the water. But you can see how strong these animals are, especially a bull like Big Joe. You, can, you cannot underestimate the strength and agility and power and athleticism of these animals because they will surprise you in a heartbeat. And when you put a thousand pound bell out here and he hits it and rattles the tractor, that's serious stuff and then he knocks it apart and, and it explodes within a couple of minutes and then the next thing you know is he's rolling it around guys that's that is very powerful and very strong um but it's amazing what these animals can do over here dunbar a lot of you may be wondering how's dunbar handling this situation well He's been doing okay. Uh, they both kind of grunted and, and blown at each other, showing some of that aggression, obviously, what Big Joe's doing. But what Dunbar has been doing is when Joe starts doing stuff like that, he paces the fence. I've got a little footage of him pacing the fence back and forth. It's probably about 
I don't know, 80 yards away, and he's making these little strut sounds with his breathing, and he's, uh, he's, I think he's just letting Big Joe know he's here. But I don't, guys, if these two ever locked up or I put them together, it would not be good, I promise you. I think Big Joe, at the age he's at, he could, he could um, really get after Dunbar. I don't want to ever see that, and I hope that I don't ever see it. Because um, when two bulls, two bison bulls go at it, uh, you could have some serious damage, not only to your equipment, but to each other of those bulls. They can get pretty, pretty hurt. And in this situation, if Big Joe and Dunbar ever did lock up, it could be bad and Dunbar could be seriously hurt. And then we would be down another bull and we just don't want to lose Dunbar. He's, a, he's one of our favorites. And I know you guys wouldn't want Dunbar to get hurt, so we're gonna do our best to create these two herds and not ever let Dunbar and Big Joe together. <laughs> that didn't work out very well. Oh, what about flow? That didn't work out very well for uh for Kit. <laughs> she got in my way. Hey guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Get an update on the entire bison family and the bison herd. Right here, we got our new head gate. It's not up yet intact. Stay tuned for that. We're gonna put our new head gate on and attach our crash gate to it. And we're gonna do a couple different things this year. We're gonna use, use some black netting to try to um, black out or try to cover up some vision le left and right for the bison um, as we work them this year. Kind of like our tub here, you can see it's sheeted. That's because when you work bison, you don't want them to see anything left and right. You always want them to go straight um, and, and they can you know try to get through stuff you know, if they see that light. So we're gonna do some new stuff this year. I got some blackout netting here, some fencing that I'm gonna put here in the holding area, part of our corral. And then they'll run through the tub and they'll come out here in the new head gate and the squeeze chute. So stay tuned for that. As we've got some upgrades, we've got some new things we're gonna try because here in a couple weeks, we're gonna work our bison for our fall handling and they'll get their fall vaccinations. And uh, when I say working, that's what I mean. Uh, we actually have to bring them up, put them in the pens, sort them out, and then run them through the squeeze chute. And this is where we're also gonna pull off our calves. We've got three calves. We've got two heifers and one bull. We'll pull those calves off and they'll start the weaning process here in our new holding pens and our new corral system. They'll do that. And then uh, also, this will be the very first time that Joe, Flo, and Kit the new three members of the Cross Timbers Bison Herd will be worked. They've never been through a squeeze chute. And uh, you're going, well, how are they looking so good or how are they doing so well? Well, guys, they had really good owners that handled them every day. They sprayed them for flies using a pump sprayer. They also use safeguard pellets. You can use safeguard pellets for wormers. Um, and that's another way to, instead of vaccinations through wormer or uh, the oral way of worming cattle or bison or any type of livestock. You can also use these pellets that Safeguard makes um, for worming. They, they ate those and that's good. And that's why those, those bison have been taken care of, those three new ones. But this is the first time we're gonna run them through the squeeze chute and get their first set of vaccinations um, for the fall. 
and we'll be working our bison here pretty soon, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. You can follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Hit that subscribe button. Guys, you can follow a bison farm in southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. Thank you, guys.